Today we're going to be talking about how to design Solar Edge systems, specifically how to pick your single phase inverter. So most inverters operate with a MPP range or a voltage range. So the idea is you select a module based on that voltage range or a string of modules based on that voltage range. Solar Edge is a little bit different in the fact that our inverters work on a fixed voltage principle. So what does that mean? The optimizers will do their job and they will adjust the output voltage of the modules to make sure the inverter always sees a steady, constant, fixed voltage. The voltage is gonna change depending on the inverter model, but in this example, the fixed voltage is 380 volts DC. The result of having a fixed voltage inverter is we can have a lower cost inverter with higher efficiency. There's no expensive electronics inside the inverter that do MPPTs. The module stringing is gonna be based on power instead of voltage. Longer strings equals less wiring end components as well as increasing your design flexibility. What are those fixed string voltage values? For the SE3000H, 3800H, 5000H, and 6000H, the fixed voltage is 380 volts DC, yielding a maximum string length of 5,700 watts. For the SE7600H, 10,000H, and 11.4H, the fixed voltage is 400 volts DC, yielding a maximum string length of 6,000 watts. So how do I select a single phase inverter? Well, it's gonna come down to the, basically the maximum DC to AC ratio. So let's look at this project. We have a couple of roof constraints. It looks like three vents, a chimney, as well as three azimuths. The total amount of PV panels sold here is 305 watts. The service entrance size is a 200 amp bus with a 200 amp main circuit breaker. So how do I pick my inverter? Well, basically I just look at the system power and I calculate what is the maximum power and I compare that to the DC to AC ratio. Solar Edge single phase inverters with HD wave technology allow a maximum DC to AC ratio of 155%. So what does that mean? If I have a 10 kilowatt AC inverter, I can put 15.5 kilowatts DC on this inverter. So let's look at our system size. Again, it was 35 modules at 305 watts, yielding 10,675 watts. All right, so that means the smallest inverter I can use is a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. A thing to consider is the maximum output current of this inverter is 32 amps. We said previously that the main service entrance was 200 amp service. Without derating the main or Doing a line side tap, the maximum breaker size for my back feeding breaker is 40 amps, which is ideally sized for this 7.6 kilowatt inverter. If I did not want to see any clipping and I wanted to upgrade the inverter to the 10 kilowatt or the 11.4, I may have to consider derating the main or a line side tap. You always want to consider how these modules are going to get strung to the inverter. So again, in this example, we have 35 modules. So to find my maximum string length, I take my maximum power per string, which is 6,000 watts, divide by my module wattage, which is 305 watts, and I find 19 modules per string. So the arrays up here, my east-west arrays, each have nine modules for a total of 18. So I can put 18 modules on a single string. My south facing array is 17 modules, so I can put that on a single string. So just to review what we selected, it's a 7.6 kilowatt inverter with a maximum DC 8 to AC ratio allowed of 155%. The system size was 10,675 watts. We decided to use two strings, one of 18, one of 17. And then the last thing to consider is really the wiring from the array down to the inverter. Because the optimizers are current limited at 15 amps, most often 10 gauge will get us there. So 10 gauge wiring from the roof down to the inverter. Thank you for joining us on how to select a single phase inverter. My name is Cameron Stewart, and I hope to see you on other courses. For additional information and access to more in-depth tutorials, go to SolarEdge.com Select Login and eLearning to get access to the library of SolarEdge learning materials.